Today, we're going to look at radicals and different properties of radicals. So let's first look at one property. This is called the product property of radicals. The product property of radicals states this. If we have a radical and the radicand is a product, of A and B, then we can rewrite them as a radical with A times a radical with B. To briefly demonstrate an example, we can say, let's have the square root of 9 times the square root of, let's say, 3. If you see that, it can be split up using the product property into two radicals. And that'll be the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. We can further simplify because we know that 9 is a perfect square. So the square root of 9 is 3. We don't know what the square root of 3 is, unless we were to use some calculator. But in this case, we'll leave it like that. And then we have 3 times the square root of 3. So the important part here was understanding the product property and how it was used. Underneath the radical, the radicand was 9 times 3. So instead of keeping them both underneath the radical, we split them up and made it the square root of 9 times the square root of 3 then we would be able to simplify that first radical into three. The second radical remained the same. We'll try another example. Let's say if we have the square root of 54. Well, we know that 54 is not a perfect square. It's not on our list. However, we can still simplify this. We can say to ourselves, What's the largest perfect square that goes into 54? What is the largest perfect square that goes into 54? So if we have perfect squares of 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and so on, we want to say what's the largest one that will go into a 54? To me, it looks to be 9. 9 is on our list, and that goes into 54 evenly. It goes into 54 6 times. So we have the square root of 9 times 6. And in using our product property of radicals, we can rewrite it as the square root of 9 times the square root of 6. The square root of 9 is a perfect square that we just picked out. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 6 can't be taken, so we'll leave it underneath the radical symbol. And we have 3 times the square root of 6. The square root of 54 is 3 times the square root of 6. Let's try another example. In this example, we have the square root of 300. Well, that's definitely not a perfect square, so we must think to ourselves, what is the largest perfect square that can go into 300? Well, the largest perfect square that can go into 300 from our list of perfect squares would seem to be 100. 100 is the largest perfect square that goes evenly into 300. And it goes into 300 three times. So we'll say the square root of 100 times 3. Now we can use our product property and rewrite this as the square root of 100 times the square root of 3. Now the square root of 100 is a perfect square as we've said. It's the largest one that went into 300. The square root of 100 is of course 10 times the square root of 3. Let's try one more example and see if you get the hang of it. 
we'll say to ourselves, what is the square root of 75? Well, it's not a perfect square, so you must think to yourself, what's the largest perfect square that goes evenly into our 75? Well, I would say to myself, 25 would be the largest perfect square that we know of that goes into 75. So I can rewrite it as 25 times, I'm sorry, 3. 25 times 3 is 75. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now using our product property, I'll write right here, square root of 25 times the square root of 3, right? Our product property of radical says if we have a product in the radicand, we can separate it and write them separately as two radicals. This is what we've done. 25 times 3 is a product. We've separated them both and written them as two radicals. So now we take the square root of 25, which is 5. The square root of 3 is not a perfect square, so we can leave that alone. And our solution is 5 times the square root of 3. After discussing the product property of radicals, we can now get to the quotient property of radicals. The quotient property is this. We have a radical with a quotient in the radicand. We have A divided by B. The quotient property says we can rewrite this with two radicands. A, the radical A, or the radical B. Square root of A over the square root of B. So all we did here was take the square root of A over B and separate it into two radicals and made it the square root of A over the square root of B. Let's try an example. Our example says take the square root of 36 over 25. Well, according to the quotient property, we can rewrite this as the square root of 36 over the square root of 25. We know the square root of 36, it's a perfect square. 6, we know the square root of 25, it's also a perfect square. 5, so 6 fifths is our solution. Now sometimes on the exam, they may want you to take this further, they might say, write it as a mixed number. So we all know if we wrote that as a mixed number, we'd get one and one-fifth, but that's fine. So to recap what we just did, we had a quotient in our radical. We separated the two by writing the numerator and the denominator as separate radicals, and then we just took the square roots of each. Let's try another example. If we're given the square root of 3 over 16. We can apply the quotient property of radicals. Quotient property says I can rewrite it as the square root of 3 over the square root of 16. After doing such, I cannot take the square root of 3, so I'll write that over. However, I do know what the square root of 16 is, which is 4. So that's our solution, the square root of 3 over 4. And in doing so, we applied the quotient property. So the quotient property said there's a quotient within the radical symbol. So we can rewrite it as the numerator, the square root of 3, the denominator, the square root of 16. We took the square root of 16 because it's a perfect square. We didn't take the square root of 3 because it's not a perfect square, and we can't break that down any further. 